Hello, I'm Dale. I'm going to show you today uh, how I have my trailer set up. I have an RV travel trailer, a Windjammer 3029W. And uh, what I did, I set up my trailer on a with a moisture detection system using a smart uh, Samsung smart systems. And so that if it detects water anywhere out throughout my trailer around water sources, uh, that it will actually shut the main water supply off at the pole when I'm camping or even here at home. Uh, right now I've got water connected to everything uh, and I leave it that way a lot of times. But I will tell you one time I did come out here one time and water was overflowing and because I left the faucet open and when I did it filled up my gray tank and it run all over the trailer. That's not a good thing to happen. So in order to prevent that from ever happening again, I set up a system where it will shut itself off if I'm not around to catch it. So here we go. We're going to start off. I'm going to show you how I got it set up. Okay, I'm going to start off by showing you how we have our Wi-Fi set up in our trailer. And uh, if you look up here, I have a cradle point, IBR 900. And what that does, it takes the, that takes the sailor and makes uh, wireless internet with it. Uh, the IBR 900 is what most of the, a lot of the police force uses uh, for their computers and their cars and such. Uh, the reason I went and got that because it was probably the most powerful one that they make. And when I sometimes I'm remote places and need all the power I could get to make sure I've got good internet because I use my internet for not only the smart systems but stream TV channels and different things. So I uh, also have uh, Alexa set up in my trailer. Uh, Alexa, sure. we don't need you to talk Alexa. Okay, uh, over here you'll see after it takes the Wi-Fi I got the Samsung Smart Things Hub and Smart Things Hub, it makes uh, from Wi-Fi, it uses what they call Z-Wave or Zigbee, either one. They're both similar. Um, and the good thing about Z-Wave and Zigbee versus Wi-Fi, uh, Z-Wave, you can daisy chain uh, different uh, sensors and different things around. So if you've got sensors placed throughout your area coverage expands where versus Wi-Fi it's got one blanket area that it covers and that's it. Z-Wave you can actually just keep daisy chaining them uh, using different sensors and stuff and supply it for a lot longer distances. I know I have a system set up at my home also and it uses all the way from my house even across the street it goes over to my shop uh, because I daisy chain different Z-Wave systems out there and they just keep, they brought reprogrammed. Every one is actually like a uh, expander. So that's kind of the good thing about Z-Wave versus a Wi-Fi system. Uh, the smart things, like I said, uses, makes Z-Wave. Uh, it also makes Zigbee, which is just another thing similar to um, Z-Wave, I guess. But uh, Z-Wave seems to be the better. Uh, I'm going to walk into our bathroom and you will see inside my shower I have a this is a moisture sensor and that's one of the sensors I use to detect for leaks inside my trailer. I pick it up here and on the back side uh, there's two little small metal prongs and that's what detects when water goes across it. Uh, for that sensor, I also got one. Uh, it's probably dark, you can't really see it there. I got one underneath my water heater. I got one behind my toilet. Uh, I opened my cabinet in the back. You can't really see it there, but I got one there. I got one under my kitchen sink. Uh, I've even got one out behind my refrigerator on the outside because uh, I have an ice maker system and to keep it from leaking there especially on the the wood floors and stuff I, if there's a leak it might take a while to find it so I wanted to detect the leak and when it detects a leak I want to shut the water off I'm going to use my phone and you can see how the system works I'll show you here uh, over here on the phone, I've got uh, different sensors. I've got an RV shower leak, water heater leak, RV kitchen cabinets, bath vanity. Uh, I've got the water valve itself and toilet leak. I also got one behind the ice maker, like I told you. 
So what I can do, I can turn the water on. And why do I have one in the shower? That's kind of a strange because it's not, you know, normally when you take a shower, you don't want to detect water. Well, when I'm, I'm in storage, like I am right now at my house, I put in the shower. That way there, if something happens and my gray water tank is blocked off, shut off, and I left the faucet running for too long instead of filling it up and running over my shower it would uh, alert me and shut the water off because I have one set up inside the shower pan itself and once I'm camping I normally take it out and I set it up there on the floor somewhere where it's not going to be wet so anyway that's the reason I have it in the shower when I come home that's the first place because when I had a leak one other time before and that's what it ran over from the shower pan so I'm going to catch it before it stops if it ever tries to do that again, even if it didn't shut the valve off, but it will. Uh, that's where it's going to detect it first. And not only will that sensor through this smart system turn the water off, which I'll show you, it also sends me a text and a notification that I, a leak was detected and it shuts the water off. So I'm alerted to it also. So what I'm going to do, I've got the water running. And I'm going to put a little bit of, just a little bit of water up here and simulate where I had, might have had a leak or something. I'm going to take this sensor and I'm going to place it on that water. I just got a moisture detected. And if you look over here, my water is slowing down. My water is slowing the way down, and if I look over here, my water valve shows to be in the closed position. I'm showing to have a leak from the shower. So the system worked. So all I have to do is fix my, come fix my leak. I take the sensor out and dry it off. I'm going to dismiss it because I don't really need that no more. I've done fixed it and after a little while that's going to change back to normal. It takes a little bit just to make sure but it'll change back to normal and my valve is still closed. It won't open until I tell it to. So let's go out there and look and I'll show you how we can reset it and, and open that water valve back up. Okay, I'm outside my trailer by the utility pole where my water would normally be and you can see here the valve is closed and on the side here they got a handle that shows us this way here it's in the closed position whenever I go to open it it'll open it back up I can either do it by my phone or I can just come uh, come out here and do it and just turn it on you see there now I have water back to my trailer again and I'm back to normal that's it Everything worked fine. Thank you.